Let's imagine that you're an aeronautical engineer, and you need to design the perfect wing for your airplane. Well, you're going to spend many hours deep in thought pondering exactly what the best sort of design will be. And that's because there's going to be trade-offs. You're first of all going to have to think about the mission of your aircraft. What is it designed to do? Is it designed to be a high-speed fighter jet? Or maybe it's going to be some sort of a short-haul cargo airplane to the north of Canada. In either case, you're going to need to design a very different wing. So, this section is going to take a look at some of the considerations when it comes to designing a wing. What do we need to consider? What do we need to think about? How are we going to end up with our final wing shape? Well, there's two major things to consider. One would be the airfoil of our wing. As you can see in the opening photo here, we actually have a number of various designs of the airfoil. When designers started out, they tended to have wings that looked something like that in terms of their side profile. You can see that there was an upper curved surface, and then down at the bottom as well, we had a lower curved surface. In the end though, notice that overall we have something known as positive camber. That's going to generate lift upwards. Later on, we see that we actually ended up with an airfoil that became a little more straight along the bottom and slightly more curved on the top. And then, as we started to design faster and faster airplanes, we discovered that these had certain deficiencies, and we started to work more and more towards what are known as laminar airflows, or airfoils. And those gave us laminar airflows. So we'll start to take a look at some of these individually later on. But let's start out first with the overall wing plan form. When we talk about wing plan form, we're asking ourselves, what does the wing look like from the top? So you can see over here to the left, we've got a fairly rectangular looking wing, uh, almost like a chocolate bar. In fact, sometimes these types of wings here are referred to as the Hershey bar wing because they look like a Hershey chocolate bar. Over here, we've got more of a kind of a combination of a tapered and as well a triangle shaped wing. And then finally, over on the far right, when we start to look at some really, really fast aircraft, we've now got the Delta wing. Now as we move on, we're going to start to see that there's benefits to a wing like this, but then there are certain situations where a rectangular wing isn't going to work very well, so we're going to want to move more over towards the delta wing. And you know what? Perhaps, actually, I'll start out with the whiteboard and start to show you some of the various plan forms and how they affect our airplane. Um, oh, shouldn't, don't forget uh, a tapered elliptical. I almost forgot to mention that one. That's actually sometimes referred to as probably one of the most perfect wing designs in existence. You know, the Spitfire from World War II, an elliptical wing, it has some very good qualities. But let's go over to the whiteboard and start to draw out some of this. When it comes to the wing plan form, particularly so when we think of GA airplanes, the trainers that you're going to fly, we could start out with, say, a rectangular plan form. So that would be like the chocolate bar, Hershey bar wing. So of course over on this side we've got the fuselage. We could also end up, let's call this of course, you know, the rectangular. But then we've also got what are known as tapered wings. Now that would be a wing perhaps where from the fuselage it might end up, you know, starting out fairly straight, but then it will have at some point maybe a taper to it. This is, say, a, a later version of a warrior wing. So, I'll just draw that fuselage here. So this is tapered. And then we've also got 
Um, perhaps we could call it the elliptical, which isn't used very often anymore. So this would be, as I mentioned, on the Spitfire wing. I'm just going to draw in a set of ailerons here for each wing. And then let's talk about how and why engineers will choose each one of these types of wings. What they found is that each of these types of wings actually has different stall characteristics. The rectangular wing, what it will tend to do is it will tend to start to stall in here near the fuselage. And as we get slower and slower and slower, what will happen is that region of stall will slowly spread outwards from the initial stall near the root. So it will head out there, and then it will continue out here as you get slower and slower. So it will stall from the root outwards. With a tapered wing, the stall characteristics change. A tapered wing, what it will tend to do is it will start to stall in this region here. And then as we continue to slow the airplane down, that region of stalling will spread outwards like that. So you'll end up with this being the stall area and then this being the stall area over time. Now an elliptical wing stalls very differently. What it actually does is it stalls at the very, very trailing edge initially. So in that zone. And then as this airplane gets slower, it will continue to stall moving from the trailing edge forward. So it'll look like that, and then eventually like this, and eventually like that. So that's how we end up with the typical stall pattern of each of those plan forms. Now, as we look at each of these plan forms, imagine you're flying a training airplane. Well, the tapered airfoil isn't quite as nice because what will happen is eventually the ailerons become inside of that stalled zone. So what's that going to do for our control? As we approach the stall, we're not going to be able to control our aircraft. The elliptical has sort of the same problem as well. But take a look at the rectangular wing. Because it stalls near the root, one of the last things to stall happens to be the ailerons. So we're going to have good control all the way up to the stall. Now you'll see later on in the presentation that there's some tricks that we can use to actually cause the tapered wing to not stall at the ailerons so early. It's known as washout. Now, this isn't immediately obvious, but let's start to now think about say, some of the drag characteristics of these air or plan forms. As I look at the rectangular airfoil, well, imagine the air flowing towards the rectangular airflow or the rectangular airfoil, the leading edge of this particular wing. I can see that, you know, at every point, the airflow is directly perpendicular to the leading edge. So these are going to generate a lot of what is known as parasite drag. An incredible amount of it. The tapered, well, we start to reduce that parasite drag slightly. You know, we don't have the airflow directly perpendicular anymore. The elliptical, again, the same thing. A slight reduction in drag. Now, imagine, however, we start to design a fighter jet. Well, maybe we're going to go with like a delta wing. Again, we can see parasite drag is going to be reduced. All right, so that's good. But there's another thing underlying these various plan forms. 